Welcome. In this session on natural deduction, we'll explore one of the relationships that exist between a universal quantifier and conjunction. Let's try to prove a sequent. So what we'll try to prove is if everything is P and everything is Q, then everything is both P and Q. Let's take a look at what that is. So that would be everything is P and everything is Q, therefore everything is both P and Q. To prove this, we'll begin by writing our premise and our conclusion. In this instance, there's one premise, so that is everything is P and everything is Q. And then our conclusion will be that everything is both P and Q. We begin by taking a look at our premise. Oh, we have to write that as a premise, don't we? So we look at our premise and we look at our conclusion. Well, I see that the premise is a conjunction. So my personal inclination, yours might differ, but my personal inclination would be to tear this apart so that I get its pieces, and then I'll take a look at what we've got. I'll do that. So what I'll do is I'll use conjunction elimination type 1 and pull for all x, p of x, onto its own line. So that will be conjunction elimination type 1 based on line 1. And then, so that's just propositional logic, right? And then, using propositional logic, I can pull out the right conjunct. So that's for all x, q of x. So that's conjunction, elimination, type 2, also based on line 1. I now take a look at these lines and this and say, what could I do? If I was to use forward reasoning, I'd say, well, I could assert, for example, p of a. The trouble is, if I did that, how would I get to my goal? So, I take a look at my conclusion and say, what if I was to write down the parse tree for it, what would it look like? And it would start with a universal quantifier. And that means that what I could do is I could introduce an assumption box, which leads to universal introduction. So, I'll try that. I'll draw my box. And with this box, I'll note that the reason is universal introduction. The box will start at line 4. And for this, I assume a fresh variable. Let's pick the variable z. And that is an assumption. And then I... so. Does Z appear elsewhere in the proof? No. Is Z fresh for X in the goal uh, formula? Yes. So it's a fresh variable. Good. That's what we like. I now take that fresh variable and I substitute it into the quantified formula, and that's the bottom line of my box. So I'll offset it, which is my custom, and I'll say that is P of Z and q of z, and that's what I'm trying to prove. I now take a look at my assumption and all the lines preceding it that are within scope, and hmm, what could I do? I could take this and I could, up, I could then use, use this particular variable and I could do universal elimination and assert that if this is any variable whatsoever, that it has to have property p. So let's do that. That would be line 5, and that would be asserting that this, this new variable has property p, and that would come from line, that would be universal elimination based on line 2. And I could then say, well, I've used that one. 
how could I use it here? Well, I could apply the same rule to this. So that would be line 6, and that would be asserting that that variable has property Q, and that would also be universal elimination, but now it's based on line 3. If I have P, I have Q on separate lines, then, con then from propositional logic, conjunction introduction allows me to conjoin them, and so that conjunction can be justified by conjunction introduction based on line 5 as the left conjunct and line 6 as the right conjunct. I've now completed the box. That means that this line is justified, and it's a line that it's a box that began at line 4 and ends at line 7. And so line 8 is the last line of my proof. Now, I'm going to give you some homework. This is non-credit homework. It's stuff that I do myself when I want to understand logic a little better. What I'll sometimes do is say, okay, if this is true, is the converse true? So let's call this home study. You're probably at home, right? So let's take, let's take this and let's say, can we prove, and I'll put a question mark over this style, S-T-I-L-E is what this is called, can we prove that if everything has the property P and has the property Q, let's put a question mark to say we are not sure whether we can prove this or not, can we prove that everything has the property P and everything has the property Q? And that, that, that looks reasonable, you know? I think, I think we could probably do that one. Exactly how we do it, well, that's interesting. I'd probably, for this one, I'll give you a hint. I'd probably use backward reasoning three times on this one. So the next one is, can we prove, can we prove this for, I'm going to underline it because it's such a big difference. Can we prove it for existential quantifiers? That is, can we prove that if something has the property P and something has the property Q, can we prove that something has properties P and Q? Now, at this point in the course, we haven't actually dealt with this kind of question. One way that you could do it is you could interpret this, and we'll get to, into interpretations much later, but if you think of a counterexample, then that means that you couldn't prove it. So I would encourage you to think of a counterexample, and in particular, imagine that x is the set of integers, okay? Or imagine that p and q are properties of integers. Give that some thought and see if you can come up with a counterexample. And then can we prove, can we prove the converse of this? Can we prove that if something is both p and q, can we prove that something is P and something is Q. And for this one, you might want to consider using repeated applications of forward reasoning.